Hey guys, how you going? Sam here from Core Electronics, and before we get started, don't mind some of the noise, it is raining today, unfortunately. But, nevertheless, we're going to take a look at overclocking your Raspberry Pi today. Uh, so what you're going to need, you'll need a Raspberry Pi, and it helps if you've read through the other two tutorial or videos uh, in this mini-series. So this is overclocking your Raspberry Pi, and is the final installment in this three-part series on how to increase the performance of your Raspberry Pi. So first of all, we looked at cooling your Raspberry Pi with heat sinks and fans and different options. Then we looked at stress testing your Raspberry Pi, how you can really put it through its paces and see if your cooling system is up to scratch and whether we can use those stress testing methods once we've overclocked it to determine if the system is stable. So let's take a look at what we are actually overclocking. What is overclocking if you don't know? Well traditionally overclocking referred to increasing the clock frequency of a chip. So for example a microcontroller or a microprocessor, the, you know, a CPU, will do perform instructions on a clock cycle. So every a clock cycle is just a square wave and every uh, clock cycle, cycle the CPU can do something. Uh, so on, you know, on an edge, uh, the faster the clock cycle is, then the more instructions per second the CPU can perform. Hence, the faster it is, we're overclocking it. Now that's all well and good, but nowadays overclocking isn't just uh, limited to increasing the CPU clock frequency. Uh, indeed, there's heaps of other stuff we can uh, overclock. We can increase the clock frequency of the GPU. Uh, module, so increasing the graphics performance, we can overclock the SD RAM to get faster memory, we can increase the uh, GPU slash CPU memory allocation to decide how our RAM is being uh, split out between the GPU and the CPU, all different things like that which are going to give us increased performance depending on what you uh, want to do. Now it's important to note that there is no one uh, configuration setting that is going to be best. It depends on your application. So if you're running a RetroPie setup, for example, uh, you know it's really graphic intensive. You're going to want to give the GPU more C uh, more memory uh, compared to the CPU than if you were doing other stuff like you know lots of document editing and web browsing. So it really just depends on your application. But we're going to go through some of the different settings you can overclock. Some recommended. Uh, example settings which will which will work on all Raspberry Pi boards to give you a good general performance boost and then you can take those and have a play around and really tweak your Raspberry Pi for your specific project. Now it's also important to take note that not every Raspberry Pi board is created equal. Sure they all have the same specs but when uh, silicon manufacturers are creating the chips, so for example the BCM2837 system on chip that is at the heart of the Raspberry Pi, not all of them are created equally. There's variations in the silicon due to the manufacturing processes. So what the manufacturer does is they find a clock frequency that they can guarantee every chip will clock at. And for the Raspberry Pi 3, the BCM2837, they set that at 1200 megahertz or 1.2 gigahertz. Every chip is guaranteed to work at that frequency, so straight out of the box they work. Of course, some chips will overclock better than others because of better silicon yield. So some chips might overclock 250, 300 megahertz, whereas others might only yield a 100, 150 megahertz gain. So just because you hear of someone who can overclock his Pi to, you know, this limit or that, uh, doesn't mean you can. It's important to test out your Pi and find what's going to be stable because if you clock it past the silicon's capabilities, you'll find that you get system crashes when it's under load or it might not even boot at all. So today, we're going to look at taking our Pi right to the limit of instability, testing it and putting it under stress and making sure that it's stable, then just dropping it back to that next uh, really stable uh, system configuration so that it will run smoothly but still get that increased performance. So let's take a look. So that's uh, overclocking your Pi, why and how. Now what settings can we actually change? Well first of all, the main one is we have the ARM frequency and that is the frequency of the CPU cores. By default it is set to 1.2 gigahertz or when idling it throttles the cores back to 600 megahertz to save power. Uh, you've got GPU frequency, which is the frequency of the graphics processor as well. SD RAM frequency, uh, the speed of the memory. Uh, over voltage, which controls how uh, much voltage is being supplied to the CPU. When you overclock it, it needs more power to perform those plus clock cycles. So to get a stable system, it's going to be important to increase that voltage as well. Uh, next up, we have force turbo. Now, it's important to note that when you're overclocking, while overclocking, you do at your own risk, but it's generally fairly safe. There are some overclock settings which will void your warranty on your Raspberry Pi if set. There's a hardware bit that cannot be changed once it has been set. Force Turbo is one of these settings. What Force Turbo does is it ensures that your Raspberry Pi will always run at the maximum clock speed rather than throttling and scaling that. 
uh, and it's going to run at 100% all the time at that max frequency, which can reduce the uh, lifespan of your Pi if you run that all the time, which is why it voids your warranty. Now, with over voltage, it ranges between 0 to 8. However, if you want to use settings 7 and 8, 6 is fine for pretty much everything, but if you want to use 7 and 8, you can't do that unless you set uh, force turbo. So setting it to 7 and 8 will also void your, your warranty. Now, we have temperature limit, and this is another one of those things that voids your warranty, getting to the pointy end of the stick now. Now, by default, this is set to 85 degrees, which means if you overclock your Raspberry Pi, or if you're running something and it starts getting too hot, gets to 85 degrees, uh, it will scale back the CPU clock frequency. Now, this is to prevent any damage from coming to your Pi board in case it overheats, uh, but if you can set this uh, to a you know, much higher limit to disable that, if you want, if you really know what you're doing, but again, we'll void your warranty, use with care. And lastly, we've got GPU underscore memory, which sets that memory allocation between the CPU and the GPU that we were talking about. Um, this is fine to use and you can control uh, how that's set depending on whether you're using a CPU intensive application or a GPU intensive application. Now there's plenty more of these, you can look up the Raspberry Pi documentation for more info, but that's the general settings which will yield the most noticeable performance gain. Alrighty, now we've taken a look at some of those settings, how do we actually implement well, when the Pi boots up, it takes its system settings from the SD card in a file called config.txt, which is in the top boot level of the, uh, the SD card directory. So we need to alter that. So plug your Raspberry Pi in and go into the terminal. Now to access this file, we use the command sudo nano slash boot slash config.txt. Take us to this. This is where you can set all kinds of different settings, but today we're going to be looking at overclocking specifically. Take you guys to that screen now, so you can see what I'm doing here. Now scroll down to the very bottom, you can put it wherever you want, but it's easier if you scroll down to the bottom and keep all your overclock settings in one place. So let's try increasing the core frequency a little bit. First of all, we're going to set it to, let's try a slight increase to of 100 megahertz, which pretty much every Raspberry Pi board should be capable of. So we're going to go freak. Let's see, underscore arm uh, is equal to, actually sorry, arm frequency, I believe, is equal to 1300. I'll double check I've got that correct. Yeah, arm free. There we go. 1300. Now, it's going to run that um, as soon as the load starts getting really intensive, so we need to try and step that load up. So, to uh, save and exit, press Control X, Y, and hit Enter. Now we need to reboot for these settings to take into effect because it reads the config file as it's booting up. Pseudo reboot. Now, while that's going along, it, uh, you know, the systems can become unstable as we we're talking about. So if you set your clock frequency higher than the silicon can run at and it just doesn't cope, it will either crash when you put it under an intensive load such as stress testing, or it may not even boot at all. Now if it can't boot at all, don't worry, all is not lost. You simply take the SD card out plug it into a card reader on your computer, and then you can find the config.txt file, change the settings, pop it back into your Pi, and away you go. No, no harm done to the Pi. So now it's booting up, let's, uh, let's take a look back in Terminal, and we're gonna run one of the stress test applications we looked at in our last video called Stress. So you can use the up arrow to cycle through previously entered terminal commands. So there we go. So because I haven't used Force Turbo, it'll start off at 600 megahertz, uh, roundabouts while it's stabilized, and then once it starts to come under load, it should shift to that high clock frequency. There we go, 1300. Instead of 1200, we have 1300 for our clock frequency, which is really cool. Now, as we incre increase that clock frequency, the uh, CPU is going to draw more and more power, which is gonna cause the chip to overheat, which is why it's really important you have a good cooling system there, especially once you start getting to the higher settings. So that's all well and good. Easy overclock. Not a problem, it seems to be pretty stable. It's just cracked 50 degrees. Uh, I wouldn't imagine it would get much past that. It increased nine degrees in the first 10 seconds, but now it's only climbing a degree or so at a time, probably get to around 55, 56 degrees and then stop. So when you're stress testing, uh, you should run these tests for at least 10 minutes. And if it uh, reaches that temperature threshold and has to scale the CPU back, or if it crashes, then the test is failed and you need to go back and tweak some of your settings or adjust your cooling method. But if it doesn't, if it's all good, then uh, not a problem, we can go on to the next setting. So you should stress test your Raspberry Pi at least for a minute or two to get, you know, gauge whether it's going to be stable. Uh, so mouse moves, everything is nice and responsive still, no crashes. Uh, so we might try increasing our overclock settings now. So just exit that terminal window and we'll stop that test. Now let's go back to our 
uh, config.txt file. Alright, we'll scroll down. Now I'm going to implement some more uh, some more settings now and look at a, a, a collection of example settings which are going to give you a really good uh, performance boost across the board. Where are we? So arm frequency 1300. Let's try this at 1350 even. I know this particular Pi can overclock to 14, uh, 50 megahertz and still be stable, which is really cool. Another Pi I had only got to uh, 1350 before it would be instable, so that's sort of a bottom of the barrel one. All right, now let's increase the core voltage just to make sure that the um, CPU is going around stable. SD RAM, try to bump up the RAM a little bit. A little bit more performance gain there. And we'll adjust the GPU uh, memory allocation to 128. Now you can force uh, use force turbo here if you like. However, it's not really necessary because we're going to see that uh, that clock frequency jump up to the maximum level when we stress test it under load. Anyway, it's only if it wasn't under load where it wouldn't revert back to that to save power. Uh, plus, it voids the warranty, and we don't really need to set it now. All right, so let's uh, let's save that. Now you're not going to notice any. The user interface is still very snappy, so you won't notice any performance gain there. But then, if you try running RetroPie emulators or um, you know a lot of Flash plugins on your web browser, you'll see that performance increase. So let's reboot and see how we go. Alrighty, so our Pi is booting back up, and this should be a pretty nice build. Let's go to go to terminal and we'll run stress and see how it copes, and then we'll try running CPU burn and see. Uh, see what kind of temperatures it gets up to. All right, so it's already clocked in at 1350 megahertz and everything is nice and stable, which is good. Good, good, sitting at 52. Let's let that run for another minute or so and we'll try CPU burn. So I'll go to stress testing to find the uh, Correct command for CPU burn. All right, how are we doing here? Yeah, we're only up to 55.8, so normally we'd let it run for the full course, but to demonstrate, we'll go and try CPU burn out and see how whether we max the temperature out uh, or not. Could be interesting. I'm just gonna borrow that last command. So I'm just going to modify that to double check that's right. Fantastic. All right, let's give that a run. All right, so it's dropped back down to 40, 44 degrees, idling at 600 megahertz. How will it fare now? All right, we're jumping up already at 66 degrees. Wow, this thing is taking its toll. Now, I've only got a small 30 mil fan in here, a quite a large heatsink, which is good, and I haven't even used any thermal paste on it, which would make it much more efficient, just the built-in uh, thermal tape that came with the heatsink. So it'd be made a lot uh, more efficient if we had perhaps a 50 mil fan on there and used proper thermal paste on there. It's already jumping up to 72 degrees. I wonder if it'll crack the 80 degree mark, which is where you get a temperature warning notification. Um, all right, not too bad. It's starting to plateau out now. It might just survive CPU burn. So it's just remember that there's no one size fits all solution for overclocking. We've looked through some of the different options for overclocking. Now, find what you want to use your Raspberry Pi for, whether it's a media player, a web server, a retro Pi system, uh, you know, whatever it is, and play around with it and find what settings are giving you the best performance gain. You don't have to increase the config.txt file uh, in Raspbian in terminal. You can change it on your computer and put it straight into, uh, you know, say a media center operating system, that's going to give you a really, really good indication of performance gain when you're really streaming high um, uh, high definition stuff. All right, so we've had a slight drop in temperature there. Got up to 77 now, it's dropped back to 74. And that seems to be pretty consistent, back to 76. All right, so it looks like it might just be averaging out around the 70, 76, 77 mark, which is pretty awesome running CPU burn with nothing but a 30 mil fan and a uh, you know, medium sized heatsink is awesome, especially overclocked as we are. So that's all there is to it guys. Overclocking is really easy and there's nothing to be afraid of when you are overclocking unless you're gonna set those uh, you know, warranty 
uh, void settings, in which case just be careful and make sure you know what you're doing. Again, you overclock at your own risk, and it's important to note that this is overclocking with the Pi 3, which doesn't have overclock enabled through the uh, through the config.txt file in the menu. You actually have to go into the physical file itself and change those options. There were other overclock options with the Pi original Pi and the Pi 2. However, there are uh, they're not available in the Pi 3. Presumably, they've really got that. Um, system on chip to it, what they consider to be the highest uh, guaranteed clock setting, but of course we can see nine times out of ten we're easily going to be able to get stacks more performance out of that. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching guys. Hopefully this mini series on cooling, stress testing and overclocking your Pi has helped understand a bit more under the hood of the Raspberry Pi and how you can really uh, get the most out of it for only a few extra dollars and a couple of lines of code. That's all for now guys, see ya.